Hey there, everyone. This is Bob Martin, the RC sub guy. And hey, I'm going to throw a monkey wrench into your carefully structured lives. And I'm going live uh, without any schedule. So hey, if you're kicking around YouTube and uh, you decide to join me, that is awesome. But if not, of course, this is being recorded for posterity. Um, reason I'm talking to you today is because I've actually got two um, OTW dive models on my bench here right now. And I want to talk a little bit uh, about the quirks and features of the OTW uh, dive modules and um, specifically some of the do's and don'ts and the hints and tricks that I have learned uh, over the years with these very cool cylinders. Um, another thing from a selfish uh, perspective is that this particular cylinder was sent back to me for uh, repair and I wanted to show the owner that the repair is completed and that everything is functional and uh, go over some of the things that are in that cylinder uh, that were causing his issues. So without any further ado, again, my name is Bob Martin, the RC sub guy. Let's take a look at some cylinders. All right. So OTW actually manufactures two different uh, sizes of uh, cylinders, or I should say diameters of cylinders. This is the 3.5 inch diameter dive module, uh, as Bob Dimack calls it. And this is their old traditional 4.3 or 110 millimeter dive module. Uh, and they come with different size tanks depending on what boat you're running in. This eight inch is probably the most common. And this goes in a lot of different boats. Um, this one is going in uh, one of his OTW R-Class submarines that I'm going to be bringing to Subfest in a week and a half. And I'm sure all of you guys are going to be joining me there in Cahuta, Georgia. Um, if you want, all the info is up on my site for uh, Subfest 2020. Uh, check it out. Specifically, let's, uh, let's take a look at this. This is fully assembled. This goes in uh, actually a Thor Seawolf. Uh, submarine and therefore you do not need a lot of ballast tank for that and so this has like a little five inch ballast tank in it. Some of the uh, quirks and features of the OTW dive module. Um, primarily I want to talk about the ballast system. Now the way that this works and both the large and the small work the same way, um, you've got an inlet here on this side. Water gets pulled in by this pump. This is a reversible gear pump flows through this solenoid valve, which uh, opens whenever the pump is operating and closes whenever it is not, pumps the water down through here into the ballast tank. Now the ballast tank is completely sealed. So as that water level rises, the air inside is compressed. Uh, so you've got a high pressure um, ballast system in place here. Now with that being the case, typically what you'll see is between 50 and 60 percent of the ballast tank actually being usable volume. All right, so uh, it's a bit of a drawback to the system in that you actually need a larger ballast tank than you uh, would need if you could utilize everything. Um, but it is a sealed unit and it simplifies things uh, greatly. Now if you are confident uh, in your gear. The other thing that the OTW um, used to do, and I think he's actually gotten away from this uh, for a simplification purposes, you can see these probes inside. There's two on the bottom and there's one up on the top and that tells you when the tank is full or empty and you can see looking at it from the side that probe is about two-thirds of the way up and uh, that is uh, telling you basically that that tank is full. So, um, basically that, that pump kicks in, the valve opens up, the ballast tank fills, pump shuts off, solenoid valve closes, which stops the water from flowing backwards again. And then obviously to, uh, to surface, you do the uh, exact opposite. The valve opens up, you kick the pump on, and a combination of water pressure and the pump, pump the water back out again. Um, what you'll actually find is a lot of times it's impossible to get all of the water out of this tank because that inlet is about uh, two millimeters higher than the bottom of the tank. Gets a little problematic as you can see with that. Uh, just got a little condensation in there because I couldn't get all the uh, water out. Um, 
I would say probably my biggest frustration with these cylinders is uh, is getting everything in connected and these um, knurled nuts on. Uh, I'm going to show you in a moment how I go about doing that. But first I want to show you uh, the system in operation. Now this was brought back for repair and um, basically the entire thing flooded. And the reason was that the owner took the end off, um, did some modifications inside, and then um, forgot to reconnect the hose onto this little uh, nipple here. So of course that hose is just pointing inside. You kick the pump on and the pump happily fills the chamber completely full of water. So not a super awesome situation. Fortunately, the uh, dive control board, uh, the solenoid valve, uh, the pump, uh, and uh, even the servo were okay. Um, not a problem. However, the remote on off switch uh, was kaput. Um, I don't know if I can still find it in my garbage, but it was kind of a rusty mess. I can't find it. Um, so I went ahead and replaced that. So I've got a brand new key fob here. And uh, basically what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn on the radio, hit on. Pump kicks on for one second. Um, everything is running, operational. We've got lights showing that our uh, electronic speed controller has power. I'll just check out the, the functions here. We got our throttle. We have our uh, forward dive planes. And I'm gonna make a note here, and I don't know why this is like this, but the owner, when he sent this to me, cut the linkage that I had in place off. And this is very short here right now. Uh, so he's gonna have to be really careful that when this fully retracts, that when he puts that connector on, um, it doesn't bottom out that seal, that bellows seal. Um, on the other side, we have our rudder. And we have our bow pl or stern plane override because it's on a pitch controller, as you can see, that moving automatically in the back there. And we got the pump, which is uh, on the back. You can hear that work. So everything is fully functional and fully operational. Um, it's going to turn it off. And we're good to go. Now, as I mentioned, one of the uh, biggest problems that I have with these uh, cylinders is, I'm gonna pull off my prongs here on the back, is reconnecting the uh, end caps on. And uh, the reason for that is that it is a, a tricky, tricky, um, process, you, you have to make sure that none of the wires are trapped between that equipment tray and the bulkhead. You have to perfectly nestle and align that cylinder over the lip um, in the back there. You have to make sure all of the connections are done at the top. And then as you're doing that at the exact same time, you need to thread these long brass rods through these little holes push everything down and simultaneously put the knurled nuts on the end. Uh, now, if you've got a nice clean install, typically that is not a monstrously uh, painful procedure, but if you've got a lot of stuff in there with a lot of wires, um, it makes it pretty problematic. So what I like to do um, is actually pinch this between my legs, uh, hold it, and now I've got two arms free to slip everything on to align everything at the top and to drop the nuts on and to tighten them down. That's particularly important for the pump end of the cylinder. The other thing that I like to do, and you can see this here, uh, up in the front, these gray brackets. Um, I like to permanently adhere the equipment tray to the forward bulkhead so that when you pull that off, um, everything comes out. Um, as shipped from Bob, uh, it's separate, so you kind of pull it out, and it's all loose, and all the linkages kind of like bend, and it's just kind of a nasty mess. It's not a good uh, scenario. So just make some little brackets 
Um, I printed these out of plastic, but you could use, um, you know, like uh, L bracket steel or aluminum uh, or anything that you want for that. Um, that's pretty well it. These are, these are simple, uh, reliable, but not the most economical watertight cylinder on the market. Um, you know, these are about 1100 bucks, I think. Um, plus you've got to add your, you know, your pitch controller. Um, if I understand things correctly from Bob, they're not coming with the dive control board anymore. So you're not going to have a full and empty reading inside the cylinder but that's really not a big deal because basically you're just going to fill the tank until it submerges and you're going to pump it full uh, empty until it uh, surfaces so it's not a big deal he's going to switch to a more um, simple uh, reliable and economical uh, speed controller and that will run the pump and the um, solenoid valve so both of these, uh, and that, that 4.3 inch diameter cylinder is about $1,300, by the way. And it can get a little bit more when you start talking dual shaft and larger tank. Um, I carry both of these at the Nautilus Dry Docks. Uh, if you are interested, um, this 3.5 is, is actually a really cool uh, size. This will run a lot of boats, particularly when you start getting into you know, like 70 second scale, uh, some of the larger 96 scale. Um, boats and then the um, 4.3 is really good for the 48th and the 32nd scale boats all right so again um, these are the uh, the OTW dive modules and I just wanted to show you that I had fixed this cylinder uh, for the gentleman um, another quick hint uh, for those of you with this is the tension that you put on these knurled nuts you never use tools to tighten this down, all right? You put the cap on, you tighten it down until it seats, and then you give it a, probably about another quarter turn with your fingers, all right? It doesn't take a tremendous amount of force to seat it on there. Um, once you have everything assembled, you take this to your Cool. You take it to your bathtub um, and you put it in, turn it on, and cycle the ballast system. Now, if we think about this, again, from my explanation a little bit earlier, when you do that, um, particularly if you've uh, installed a, uh, a pass-through right here for the air, and I don't know if you can see it, but you can actually vent this tank into these um, um, compartments so that you can use more usable volume it'll show you any leaks now if this is a sealed tank which is probably what you want to do what i would recommend is drilling uh, a small piece of brass tubing and installing it in one of the two ends you put a piece of rubber hose over that and uh, blow into it and that'll pressurize your compartments and it will show you precisely where any leaks are occurring so say for example you know there's a nick in the o-ring right here you will specifically see at that exact spot bubbles emerging. So you'll be able to identify really easily where any leaks are coming from. All right. So that's a little hint for anybody with any watertight cylinder. I really recommend uh, installing a hose uh, like on a little nipple. And when you're not using it, just plug it with a little piece of brass rod uh, or the equivalent. And uh, you'll always have an easy way to test um, you know, one thing I've learned, the easier that is, the more likely you are to do it. And you should be doing it before any run. Take the cylinder itself out of the boat, put it in the bathtub, blow into it, check for leaks. All right. Do it before every run and you will rarely have an issue with a sunk boat. Because with these particular, um, a lot of times what will happen is this, uh, you won't be seated properly off to the side and you tighten it down all is good you throw it in your boat and blah 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 down it goes completely flooded ruining hundreds of dollars of electronics so that is it just wanted to show you the otw cylinders uh they're great units i do recommend them um if you've got the uh wallet for them they are a great uh, unit to power your RC submarine. Uh, very robust, and Bob's had units that have been uh, operational for well over 10 years. 
uh, in some places, 20 years with no issues. So that's the OTW dive module. Um, thanks for joining me on this spontaneous uh, RC Sub Guy live on YouTube. Appreciate you joining me. And uh, hopefully you'll do it again. Make sure you check out all my other videos uh, under my channel, RC Sub Guy. And uh, if you're looking for cool RC submarine goodies, uh, NautilusDryDocks.com is where you will find them. One last note, again, Subfest 2020 RC Submarine Regatta is coming up from the 18th to 20th in Cahuta, Georgia. It is going to be epically awesome. We're going to be sharing a lot of the uh, video and photos from that with you guys, but it will not replace actually being there. If you can make it, I would love to see you. All the details are on my website at NautilusDryDocks.com. So, I'm going to leave it at that. Thanks for joining me, everyone. And as always, we will catch you next time.